Good afternoon, friends. I'm Connie. Most of you who are on probably already know who I am, so I'm not going to say a whole lot about that. We're going to get into it today, <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you a little bit about engraving and etching and working with glass, since that's our project today. So, getting with the basics, I'm going to move this camera just a little bit. Alright, thank you for your patience. Always fun getting these things started and set up. No fancy music to get things started, it's just me, so y'all have to put up with me. So here's what we got. Um, there's a big difference between etching and engraving. Etching is done primarily with acids on a different media, any different media, any hard media, a service, for example, like glass. We're all familiar with the term acid etching and things like that. So that's kind of what etching does. Engraving is a little bit different because with engraving, you're using a tool, in our case, a hand piece, a drill, and we're re physically removing little bits and pieces from that medium to make it a different surface, to actually remove bits and pieces of that so that it has a fine line in this case when I engrave, if you will, on wood, it would be considered a relief carving, for example. So there's all kinds of things that we can do with the equipment at hand. Now this is a hand piece. It's a high-speed turbo hand piece, most commonly used for dental drilling. It uses different burrs. I have uh, right here is a four tenths, or sorry, four one hundredths uh, diamond head burr. And this is a six one hundredths diamond head burr. And I use those primarily in the drilling and the extraction of medium on my glass to create these things. Uh, the next important thing to know about these is safety equipment. And of course, I have hearing protection, always a necessity. Got to keep the ears safe and protected. Nobody wants to go without hearing. Mask. Obviously when you're working with glass, the last thing you want to be doing is breathing in gl uh, glass. Not good for the lungs, not good for the body. So breathing protection is very important. <clears throat> Finally, I use an OptiVisor. You'll see my picture on my website, my Facebook page with this lovely gizmo on and it helps me to magnify each piece so that I can see what I'm doing most importantly get down right down to the nitty-gritty and get those details the way that I want them so that's very very important with the naked eye one can do some amazing things but with an OptiVisor or something similar to magnify the surface that you're working on you can come up with some really really incredible designs and uh, have less room for error when you're working with those things. So here's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm working in conjunction and collaboration with Ella Shepo. And Ella has beautiful designs. And she decided she wanted to put them on glass. And she approached me uh, when I commented to her on her Facebook page, one of her Facebook pages, that I would love to do her design in glass. And she thought that was a pretty cool idea. So here is one of Ella's designs on crystal. I love the way the, the butterfly is coming out. So we're going to recreate this design today so that hopefully that you can see the detail on this. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece. another piece here in a hobby glass just as gorgeous as the stemware every piece is going to be a little bit different because unlike uh, many of the tools that are available today I don't laser engrave this is all done by my hot wall hands using Ella's design as a template so this is how I work I take my glass in this case beautiful goblet 
This is a nice simple piece. I've already cut and engraved the body of the butterfly in this particular case out. And what I do is continue, especially to try to create the, the almost gossamer effect of a wing, is just take bits and pieces using the tools that I have on hand. And then when I'm done with that, I'll add Ella's final logo that says shot by Ella right there on the glass as you can see there. I hope that you can see it. Let's see if I can bring it up a little closer for you. But you get an idea of how I work the templates. This one just has a little bit to go and then I go over it a second time to make sure that I've got all the detail that I want, that any missed lines are smoothed. And once I have that all cut, I have some cleaning to do and off it goes to Ella. So, let's get started, shall we? Yours first. I'm so glad you can't see my face. Now I'm gonna turn off the microphone because there's nobody in God's green earth that wants to listen to this drill for any length of time. I may periodically stop and fill you in on what I'm doing, show you a little bit about our progress and go from there. When this is all done and I get it nice and recorded, I'll add some music. By the way, thanks for visiting with me today. I really am glad to have people here. And hopefully you're going to enjoy this little segment that we've got going. Now the handpiece right now has no burr in it. So I have to choose which, which burr I'm going to work on. And since I want to finish this one first, I need to use the larger burr. That is a six point. So I'll use this one, pop it in here. Use my handy dandy little pressing tool. Make sure it's seated correctly. Now, I may have an issue. I noticed that my tube was running loose yesterday. So if this pops off at any time, you're going to hear a, well, you won't hear it, but you might see me jump a little bit. And uh, move that away. This is run off of an air compressor. It runs uh, at about 35 to 40 pounds per square inch PSI. And that forces the drill to turn at around 350,000 RPM. So if you were moving at 350 revolutions per minute, you could do some serious damage. And that is what this little diamond head will do. And without further ado, let's get started on some engraving. than just the general outline here. And you can see I've scribed it all the way through and through. I have the basic logo done here and I'm just going to take this template off and then I'll fine-tune and touch up some of the areas that might need to be cleaned up uh, to give it a little bit better appearance. And uh, gosh I'm going to give you a minute to hear the drill. You need to have a little bit of an idea what I have to go through every day. How about this? Just a real quick taste and you'll say, oh my God, never again. Is that enough for you? Okay. Anyway, there we are. So let me clean this off real quick. Choking myself with my mask. That's okay, it'll go back on nice. about engraving you use all kinds of tools one of my favorites to buff things out with is bits of skivvies or t-shirts to wipe them down because it's such a soft fabric once it's been worn to next to nothing so 
that's what I use to clean these up just a little bit. So. Number four. I'm gonna have to change burrs. I've about burnt that one up. This one. Five holes. Tell me pretty quickly whether it's in good shape. Alrighty. Let's mute this button one more time because I know you don't want to hear it. Thanks again for visiting us here at Spice of Life Studios. Hang loose with me for a little bit. I'll be right back. Just keep an eye on the prize and we'll see what I can come up with now. Okay, I need a different burr to do the etching on this. It's a little bit too fine for me to use a ball head like this diamond burr is. I need a finer tip, and hopefully, while I'm handling it, it won't burn. Burning is bad. This is a small football head, and it is a fine tip, but it allows me to do a little bit more detail while still retaining some of the circular patterns that I need when I'm doing stipples. And normally I don't work with something this tiny on this strip. happy with this at the moment. <laughs> As with most works, we always think we can do better. And that's usually when we really muck up the work, so sometimes it's better to stop where you are before you really blow things up. So, let's clean this bad boy up. I think one of the hallmarks of a, a person who's really into their craft is the patience that they take with each item and the details involved in, in making it a, a real piece of art and something that's going to mean something to another person somewhere down the line. Butterflies lend themselves really well to that because they're so popular. They're fun to watch, they're relaxing, and they're just an excellent element in today's world. They're like the little fairies that we wish we had in our lives, I guess. 